Thank you, and welcome to CSS Modules, the quest for peace and sanity in CSS. So as you might infer from my title, my relationship with CSS is not the best. In fact, in my experience, usually when I have to spend extended periods of time working with CSS, it tends to end something like this. Now, it's really, really tempting for me to just shove my computer away and say, bye CSS, I don't need to work with you. I'll work on the back end. However, as programmers, we are first and foremost problem solvers. And it just turns out that CSS is my problem. So I started looking for a solution. And here is what I've come across. In 2014, a Facebook developer named Christopher Chideau ran a presentation on CSS in React specifically. In that presentation, he said this, CSS has fundamental flaws at scale that can be solved by writing styles in JavaScript. Now, first off, it's great to know that I am not the only one with a CSS problem. In fact, most of the people in that room were really excited about this. But what does he actually mean by this? So when he talks about fundamental flaws at scale, he's talking about really, really large code bases. Code bases on which you might have dozens, if not hundreds of developers working day in and day out, pushing up code, committing code. And when you have a, an app on that scale, it's really easy to get stuck in CSS. So the question is why? This was one of the first slides in Christopher's presentation. Um, and basically, he outlines what he sees as some of the major problems with CSS. We're not going to go into depth on all of them, but the one I really want to focus on is number one, global namespace. And that is because, as JavaScript developers, we know that in programming, the first rule of JavaScript is avoid global variables. It is literally the first best practice. Why? Because when you start putting variables onto the global scope, you clutter it up. And so it's difficult to keep track of all the variables that you have. It's really, really easy when you have multiple developers working at the same time to overwrite each other's code. And so in other words, your code is really, really brittle. But that's literally what CSS does. You have all of these class names on the global scope, and so you run into all of these collisions. And so we try to work hacks by adding on more and more class names for our CSS styles, and it gets really, really frustrating. So how do we solve this? Enter CSS modules. Now, note that this is just one solution. It's not the end-all, be-all. There are others out there. Please explore them. Please tell me about them but this is the one that I chose. So what are CSS modules? According to the CSS modules GitHub repo, they are CSS files in which all class names and animation names are scoped locally instead of globally by default. So for those of us who work in React on the front end, this sounds really familiar to us because we think and develop in modularity. We create components that are compact and reusable. So this sounds great for CSS, but what does it actually look like? The idea behind it is that for any JavaScript file that you have on the front end, you would have a corresponding CSS file that has the styles specifically for that component. Putting these two files together gives you the entire component. But how does this work? Because theoretically speaking, this means that Christine can be working on one component in Grace Shopper, while Soren is working on a different component, and they don't need to worry at all about their styles colliding. How? Hmm. We've seen this, and it's something that we've talked about, and it's something that we're familiar with. Webpack. So let's get started. You need to first install Webpack, Webpack Dev Server, your style loader and your CSS loader. And then you're going to add this loader to your Webpack config file that essentially says you are looking for the CSS loader and you are setting it to modules mode. Let's start really, really simple. What does a class name look like? On the left-hand side, you see something really familiar. 
we have a button class. Really simple styling. On the right hand side, I have my component JS file, my example form. Here's where things get interesting. Notice that my two files are named the exact same thing, just CSS versus JS. This should make things really easy when you're trying to figure out which styles correspond to which components. Then in your JS file, you're going to import your dependency. So your CSS becomes a dependency, which in this case, I am naming styles. Then on my button, I'm just going to make this class name styles.button. That gives me access to my CSS. But how is this working? So under the hood, Webpack is working its magic. The CSS modules compiler is taking my CSS and it's generating an entire style sheet, just one styles.css, that has each of my modules listed out as its own kind of wrapped module. And so in my example form, you will notice that my styles.button is referencing this styles object that placed my class name button as a key that maps then to the generated CSS styles. Super, super easy. Notice also that my class name is literally just button because CSS modules takes care of all the unique class naming for you. And so if you'll notice at the end here, you have this underscore one fu zero u. That is literally just a hash that's added on to the end of the class name to make sure that there are no naming collisions. And you can configure all of that in your Webpack config file. So let's look at another example. What if I have some styling that I want to use across multiple components? We've kind of seen this before too. So let's say I have my next example component and on it, this time I want a special button. And for my special button, I need special formatting. And I know that somewhere else I have this util CSS file that has special formatting for anything I want to deem special. But it's also a button and I also need button formatting. So here's what I do. I use something called composition. In my next example CSS file, which is the corresponding CSS to this component, I am going to say for my button class, it composes this special class from my utils.css. So it's pulling all of that styling and it's bringing it in as well. So now, my st uh, when I say styles.button here, my special button has access to all of that styling. And I only need one class name. It is amazing. One more thing. In order for all of this to work, you will need to also install the Extract Text Webpack plugin. And this is super important because this is the plugin that essentially enables Webpack to find all of your CSS files from all the different components and bring them down into one single styles.css. So there are a lot of other features and functions in CSS modules. There's no way I could cover them all. I really encourage you to go check out the documentation and try it out. And you may have to ask the question, is CSS modules for me? So at the end of the day, we come back to this idea of we are programmers and we are problem solvers. And ultimately, for any given problem, there's no one end all be all solution. So in general, I would recommend CSS modules for apps that you know you want to scale up, for apps that are eventually going to have multiple developers working at the same time so that you don't need to worry about your CSS styles colliding. So try it out. See if it works for you. And if it doesn't, well, at least you tried. Thank you.